was and it's wiped out my eyes. September, <laughs> it's September 28th of Twice. 2010, and Phil, take it away. So, um, we, before you get started telling us your stories, uh, since you felt, you know, we put you on the spot with the camera, I want to put you back in a an especially Best good mood. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, this is something that uh, um, Noah took away in the Great Flood and wanted oh, to replace. when you asked me that question, uh, didn't you get another one of those? And I said, no. I didn't. And then later on, I thought, I bet you I'm going to get another joy. <laughs> oh. Joy's a finish, yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh. And, and little it's notes a, it's from everybody. Oh, this is even better than the This other is the updated version. And look on the oh, inside, man. too. There's uh, some notes from so, Oh, And you'll get a chance well, to read all you. those. And those who are not here uh, will get to uh, fill in their notes, too. I have to bring it back too. so that... Yes. Oh, maybe, yeah. I guess so. Yeah. Well, you notice I didn't put any love on that. On that yes, on I that know. Thing. That's all right. <laughs> I, I didn't want you. I'll believe it I anyway. I didn't want you fanning yeah. all that hot air. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. This is really a good book. See, I miss because you haven't had the book. I haven't gotten my, my uh, get phone call. call. You didn't get any Every call. Every year for the High Holy Days, uh, I, I get a phone message, <laughs> and I have Sister Ebo call me and, and wish me and L'Shana I Tova. I to read in Hebrew whatever it said. And, and when I lost my book, then I, I, I didn't know what it was saying, but I usually say, how's that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you very much. But we will, yeah. Now we want to hear, though, okay. about your meeting President Obama oh. and meeting Congressman Lewis. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good times. All, uh, all of which, all of which, I keep wondering, how do I manage to get into these kind of things anyway? <laughs> but, but, Ob President Obama followed the disappointment of not getting to go to the Deep South with uh, Congressman Clay. And I think, I think they were throwing out a, 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 a little peace offering to me when I get this phone call that says that uh, Senator, what's her name? McCaskill. McCaskill. I kept thinking, wouldn't it be terrible if I stand up here and try to give an invocation and, and I can't think of the woman's name? <laughs> <laughs> because when I got the phone call, my first thought was, oh no, I can't do that. I know there are, there are people that are still suffering from our going to Selma that we open the doors for the feminist movement. And I never, I, I don't think we even knew what the word meant. But, at, and that was in 65. And so I said, I can't get involved in politics. I didn't know who I was talking to, but I was going to make very sure. And they said, oh no, that we'd like to have this rather low key. And uh, it, poor old God has to always take a low key road, but that's okay. Um, so I told them, okay, but give me a chance to call and make sure that I was on safe ground because I didn't know how the other sisters were going to take it, nor the leadership and that kind of stuff. And a lot of times you run into, when you least expect it, especially with me, I, I managed to get into all kinds of trouble. And uh, so that went over very well. Then came the time of getting down there and Honestly, we were, it was at the Renaissance, and um, the thought was, well, how am I supposed to get there? And I, I really wasn't thinking about a cab, but I know now that I could have just gone ahead and called a cab. But I didn't think I should have to call a cab if somebody else was inviting me to do something like that. And then the President of the United States was going to be there. But at any rate, uh, Sister Betty Brucker, does anybody here know Sister Betty Brucker? No, I do. Betty, Betty uh, was instrumental in, uh, when she was the administrator of St. Mary's Hospital, they had one building there that the, the interns and residents used to have to live on the property and uh, take call and all that kind of stuff. 
And so um, uh, Betty, knowing that that building was available, and it, when AIDS first came in and people didn't even want to reach out and touch the same piece of furniture, um, uh, Betty opened up that building. I think they called it doorways. Or something. Still around. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And uh, and uh, Betty was instrumental in helping to get places where um, people who were suffering with AIDS in the early days, they had no place to go. Families would not take them in and all that kind of stuff. So she, uh, Betty was invited, and uh, um, Senator McCaskill apparently was also involved in that movement. And so uh, Betty was invited and uh, Betty's driver, the person that picked up Betty, also picked me up, and so we were together, and it made it it made it more enjoyable anyway. But then when I got there, um, uh, they had a wheelchair for me, and we were sitting over at the side while people were going through the line for security check, and. Uh, the group of us were over at one side waiting to get in the line and one African-American good-looking man, uh-huh. Well, I mean, I appreciate God's beauty no matter how it comes, but anyway, yeah, I'm 86, uh -huh. so I'm not looking to leap over the wall or <laughs> but but this man stopped what he was doing and he came over to me and he said you're beautiful and I'm thinking of, I look back to see if he was talking to Ben <laughs> and he said I don't know what you have done but I can tell you belong here and I'm thinking, well, you sure don't know what I've done because you know, I've never seen you before in my life. But anyway, he went back and got back in the line going through for security. And, uh, and then uh, the woman that was pushing my wheelchair, uh, they had us at one of those round tables. And when we got ready to um, g give the invocation, uh, I walked over to the stage and there was just a couple of uh, short steps to walk up to get on the stage. They had announced that I was going to give the invocation before the meal. And I'm on the stage and people just kept talking and talking and I thought, I finally decided. Then they started knocking on, the, on their glasses, you know, to get mm -hmm. attention. And I'm standing here <laughs> reading the president's address, which was, it was like this, and it was open, so I thought, well, I might as well engage myself in something <laughs> here, because if I'm given an invocation, God and I are not going to be up there talking over their, their conversations. <laughs> and so I just stood there. And I think they probably thought that this little black lady was up there to tell them how to go through the buffet line or something. <laughs> because honestly, it was like I wasn't there. And I thought, well, you're going to wait. And you're going to know that I'm here because I ain't saying nothing until you do get quiet. <laughs> and so they tapped on the glasses again and tapped on the glasses. And then finally they decided, I won, honey. <laughs> you, know, you know, they say preach the gospel at all times. And if necessary, use words. I wasn't going to use any words until they got their mouth shut. So, okay. Uh, and, and before that, I was struggling with what am I going, how am I going to pray to all these mixtures of people? I finally got on the phone and called for Rabbi Susan. I said, don't you know a psalm that is worthwhile that I could use? Uh, to base my invocation on. And she said, well, what about 133? And I thought to myself, she said, everybody knows 133. And I'm thinking to myself, I grew up Baptist, but I don't know what 133 is. <laughs> and I looked up 133. Behold how good and pleasing it is when brothers and sisters, that's mine, uh, dwell in unity. It is like the precious oil upon the head, running down upon the beard, upon the beard of Aaron, 
running down on the collar of his robes. It is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord has commanded the blessing, life forevermore. It, 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 and I could not help but think as I was reading it, now this is from the Hebrew text, and our Christian text in Matthew 25 says, as long as you have done this for the, one of my least brothers, you've done it for me. And, and my prayer became a prayer for all the needy in the world. And after the invocation was over, and the brother that had met me out there in that hall came, got up from his table and came over to me and he said, I told you you belonged here. <laughs> and his, his last name is Davis and I had that card out just oh, about a week ago and I don't know where it is now. But um, uh, he said, and he gave me one of his cards and he said, I still don't know what you have done, but I do know that you must be a prayer and praying lady and I want you to keep me in your prayers. So Brother Davis is in my prayers. And, uh, and I went on over and sat down. Well, but before I gave that invocation, I couldn't help but say I was disappointed. And I said this to the whole group. And I was really disappointed that the President of the United States and Senator McCaskill were not there seated breaking bread with us. I thought that that would have happened. And I said, but since they tell me that they're in the wing waiting, uh, we will pray over them and pray over this meal at this particular time. So please join me in prayer. <laughs> yes, I did. I, I, I mean, I, I just feel that they get so tied up in, in uh, all of that riffraff of the political movement and doing the politically expedient thing that they forget and, uh, to ask me to do an invocation and they're not even there for me to pray over. Uh, there's yeah. something wrong with that picture. Absolutely. And uh, so I, then I went ahead with my prayer and I even included the people sitting on death row who are preparing to take their last meal because there are sisters and brothers of ours who are here at this moment, they're sisters and brothers of ours that do not have a meal, and some are preparing to take that last meal. When I was waiting for the elevator outside after everything was over, there was a lady walked up with a little boy, and he looked like maybe he was 10, 12 years old, and she said, oh, and this is the sister that get, did the invocation. It was beautiful. And she even prayed for the people on death row. And I mean, I don't know how I could have left them out because it's so important that these are our sisters and brothers also. Well, at any rate, when the president came out and I could have told him what he was going to say, hello, <laughs> St. Louis, because by, by the time they got quiet, I finally got my two cents in. Well, by that time, I had already read most of what he had on there on the first page. <laughs> and uh, so then, um, uh, after the president finished with his, uh, Claire McCaskill came out first and introduced the president, and the president did his thing. And then when he got ready to come down, it was like a fence um, that had a curtain a rod that was going through and had a curtain down at the front of the stage and he came down to reach over that curtain and shake hands with people as as he was standing up there so people came from their tables and were shaking hands with him well then this there was a lady that was a volunteer with uh, I guess with the Democratic Party and she, she said do you want to take a chance shall we try to walk over there and uh, and see if we can if we can at least uh, shake hands with the president. I said, "Yeah, I'm game if you are." So we got over there, and it was it was kind of like uh, this was the corner right there, and uh, and right at that corner, all of the photographers were standing there, and these great big men that I I couldn't have seen over if, even if I wanted to. 
but it was like Moses in the Red Sea, honey. All she said was, all she said was, uh, excuse me, Sister Mary gave the invocation and she has to get to the president. And, and these great big old guys with the cameras and everything, you know, they're looking down and looking at me and like, well, what's this little riffraff doing? <laughs> and she said, Excuse me, Sister Mary is here. Would you please move? And and Moses just rolled <laughs> and I walked right on up there with and here was the president standing there. And so he reached for my hand. Honey, I reach on up there and pull that brother down there. Right right on down. And and he was gonna hug me. I had him down for the hug. And he kissed me right there on that cheek. Oh, right, man. right, wow. right there. I haven't washed my face since. <laughs> you didn't hear that, did you, God? <laughs> but anyway, I got a kiss from the president right there <laughs> on that cheek. So good. I went back to my place. The evening was a nice evening, the rubber chicken. <laughs> but it was, it was, it was nice. And then John Lewis. Before you go there. What? Go what backwards. Did I leave out? The, the, the momentous timing of that night with the president. Oh. At the very moment. You know, you, you're going to get me all shook up now. At the very moment. It, it really says it was God's agenda. As I was standing there doing that invocation in 1965, on that same night, wow. we were arriving back from Selma. Wow. And I mean, you know, um, when you got things like that on your mind, and Mm, you know, your grace and mercy brought me through. And you know that it was nothing but God's grace and mercy that brought us through that day. And, and at, it, exactly, well, from 1965 until whatever, uh, oh, until this year. So we're talking about 45 years later. On that night, we were, it was just about time that our plane was landing back here in St. Louis from Selma. Oh yeah, I forgot about that part. I, I, I think I have selective That's memory so because I didn't want to get all shook up with that one. But, but that deserves, I'm glad you didn't let me, let me leave it out because that does deserve God's grace and recognition of God's glory and God's grace and mercy being with us, because anything could have happened. And the night that we were preparing to go to Selma, the 10 o'clock news was telling of the young white minister who was beat to death on the streets of Selma. And my, my only thought to me was, are you crazy? <laughs> and uh, yeah, I think to a certain extent, you have to be kind of crazy to, um, lay all the other riffraff out, out the window or down the side or someplace. And then to have that kind of faith and trust in God that, that what we would do, and you had no idea what you were going to do, nor what, how things were going to turn out. So, but um, thank you for reminding me of that. Uh, now may I move on? <laughs> that was the perfect transition, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Congressman oh, yeah. Lewis. And then, and then missing out on going back to, I've been to Selma any number of times and, and uh, uh, since then. And then in 99, we had what we called the last freedom rides of the century uh, and took a group of our young black kids down on the bus and some, some of the, uh, um, parents, relatives, and friends of some of the children. So the children sat in the back of the bus, and the rest of us sat up towards the front. And uh, and uh, uh, we went, and we met up in Memphis with a group of um, of African American and Jewish youngsters from 
uh, Brooklyn. Uh, Cheney's brother was there. And, uh, yeah, and, uh, and, and it was almost like, here's this royal lady, and it's me. <laughs> and and, and he, was, he, he kept on holding my hand, you know, and, and yes. walking oh, yes. with me. Yeah. <laughs> well, I wasn't 80 then. <laughs> So, but but it was uh, that was that was quite a time, and we went to all of these wonderful pilgrimage sites, so that those young people would know and appreciate what others had gone through to make it possible for them to be able to vote and to have the privileges that they have. We we're not there yet, but. Um, uh, we still have a, a long way to go, and I think it's been emphasized with the party of no. Uh, we'll get to that. <laughs> of course, that you're later. with Barbara Schwerner's cousin. Yes, here in and you know, Barbara I have that picture, Barbara's, uh, Barbara uh, uh, Brogy. Uh, uh, she did a painting of a, of a, it looks like a monk in a, a in a monastery and doing some writings, and uh, she did. It's a beautiful picture. I have it hanging on my wall in my apartment. And, uh, and then the next year we took uh, we took another group down because that was to open up the new mm -hmm. the the new century, and uh, and we went to places that we didn't go the in '99. And uh, that made it possible. There were some places that I had not that I had not seen before either. And the one place that really impressed me, if you don't mind my going backwards with this, uh, it was it was the um, okay. the fact that uh, we had we we went to the cemetery where. Cheney is buried, and he's buried on the edge. It's kind of like this is the cemetery of uh, black Protestant. I think I, I think they were Methodists, but at any rate, it was their property and their cemetery. And that mother of Cheney did not have any place to bury her son, and because any place that they would have been was going to be desecrated. And here was out on the edge of that cemetery. They didn't want to take it in and put the body in there, but here he was buried out here and they had already blown it up twice. Oh, wow. And the third time they tried to blow it up, they had put a, a metal kind of covering, uh, lead I guess, that, that, would, that they could not uh, destroy it. And on the bus going over, I had a thought that we shouldn't just go and just look at a grave site, but there should be some acknowledgement of what had put that child in that grave in the first place. And I sent a message back to the kids. I was the elder, you know. <laughs> and I sent a message back to the kids that um, they were to pick out a scripture text and be prepared for somebody, one of them, to say something about that burial site. And this kid was, uh, I think his name was Jasper, ja something of that, Jarvis or something of that nature. And he spoke and he, they chose the text um, uh, about uh, what is a true friend that Jesus talks about. I don't call you servant, but I call you friend. And, and this young man stood up there and he said, now this brother and the other brothers were named Schwerner and Goodwin or all named on there, but only Cheney is buried there. And, uh, and, and he said, these brothers taught us what it really means to be a friend because they laid down their life to give us the privileges that we have. I was so proud of that kid. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, because it, all this happened just right there on the bus on the way there. 
And all of a sudden here, they read the scripture text, and then they then then he just he just stood there and looked down at that at that uh, 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 marker and uh, said, "Now these brothers were truly our brothers and our friends." And uh, and then the rabbi had. A, do you have you you call them seminarians? There were some. Well, uh, well, there was one that mm -hmm. the rabbi gave the scripture reading to this young man, and he did the reading in Hebrew. I, now, I'm, I'm presuming he read to me in Hebrew. <laughs> I have no idea, but I don't think the rabbi would have let him get away with, with not, not really doing it the right way. Uh, not like somebody else that I know. <laughs> but, he but, led us in the Kaddish service. <laughs> yeah, he did yeah, the probably prayers. said the Kaddish. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so it was, it was, it was um, very impressive that that part of it. Then now, can I go to? Yes. <laughs> okay, John Lewis. Uh, I found myself again being me, and I got in this. I got in this in this crowd of people with the fancy long dresses and. <laughs> And I mean, you know, we were, uh, my sister friend that did the driving of the car, well, you know, she's my sister, so we, we went together, but we didn't even know where John Lewis was, and they told us that it was down the corridor and around the corner or whatever. And, uh, and we so should say this was the St. Louis NAACP's uh, anniversary uh, dinner. Yeah. And John Lewis right. was coming to give the right. keynote address here in right. St. Louis. Right. This was this was the, this was the. And you were invited to give the yeah. invitation. Yes. And I was. Oh, thank you very much. You're welcome. Anything else you want to say? <laughs> 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 this this is this was their book, One Nation and One Dream, and I thought, hmm, that fits with the blessed community. So I did, I did the reading for the Blessed Community and did, did practically the same prayer. Uh, so, excuse me, so that um, I didn't have to waste time reinventing the wheel. The prayer was good, if it was, if it was good enough for, for all those folks at the, at the political gathering, I thought maybe it should certainly be uh, good for the NAACP. The disappointment that I had there was, and I, I don't think people realize, uh, I guess they get so busy being, doing the politically expedient thing. I never met the chairperson of the St. Louis group. I saw this little man walking around like, you know, like he was official somebody. And then later he was announcing who these people were that would be giving being given the awards for being outstanding St. Louis people, uh, but it 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 just didn't seem it it seemed to me that at least we should have met each other and said and I and I certainly wasn't going to be trotting around trying to find him. I thought that if I was his guest, that that would have happened. Well, it didn't happen. But before we got to the dinner part. Uh, Sister Maggie and I found John Lewis, and John Lewis looked up, and I said who I was, and he said, oh, I've been waiting to meet you for years. Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, I know I'm an old nun, but for crying out loud, don't make it that bad. <laughs> <laughs> but he hugged me, you know, he didn't, he didn't get to, Chris, to, to kiss me on this, okay. this cheek over here. That's reserved. That's reserved. <laughs> Reserve <laughs> and uh, but anyway, we hugged and uh, stood there and talked for a few minutes, and then there were other people. So I moved on over, and they were serving hors d'oeuvres in there. So uh, we we partook of the hors d'oeuvres because we didn't know anybody else that was in there anyway. And then um, Congressman Clay came in. And uh, then they came over to where Maggie and I were sitting, and they wanted some more pictures. I never did get any of the pictures. I did, I did give my card to the woman that was taking pictures and all that kind of stuff, but I didn't. Um, they didn't give me that kind of courtesy, so I couldn't brag on 
meeting Congressman Lewis, mm -hmm. but maybe someday. Uh, and and then we did some more picture taking with Congressman Clay and Lewis together. And then they put they sent it, we went into the dining room, the you know the serving area, and uh, I. I couldn't figure out why Maggie and I, we just kept sitting, of course we were there kind of early, so, and since we didn't know all those other distinguished citizens, uh, we were just sitting there and talking together, and lo and behold, we were sitting at this one round table, and nobody came, and nobody came, and nobody came, and then they filled in this one long table, Congressman Lewis was there, but this table turned out to be the table for the Anheuser-Busch, and I guess those people, <laughs> I guess the people over in Germany didn't come over for this. <laughs> 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 they didn't come over to fill that table, and then to, stop, to, to top it all off, they came and got me, and I was to sit at Congressman uh, Lewis's table, and to my right at the end of the table, like towards the end down there, and I was uh, on sitting on that corner, was the aide to Congressman Clay, or no, Congressman uh, Lewis. And a uh, very nice young man, what was his name? I had his name down here someplace. And uh, at any rate, um, they had to leave early because they had to get on a plane to go someplace else for another event. So they were they weren't out there to break bread either, <laughs> but they got prayed over and got a safe journey. So I guess that was the important thing. Um, and then I don't know whether you whether you know it or not. Uh, you probably do, but I got my fourth honorary, uh, honorary doctorate uh, in May from uh, St. Louis University. And uh, so I'm um, sister, doctor, 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 doctor. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, and, and, and this cheek was desecrated <laughs> because Father Beyond kissed me right in oh, the same place, really practically <laughs> the same place. <laughs> and I'm just going to, I'm just going to just pass these on down and you can take a look at them and, uh, and then get going around the table. But St. Louis oh. University sent me um, uh, all of those pictures and um, you can just, oh. as you look at them, just keep, keep one going, keep okay. them going around. And uh, and then the other thing that uh, after the after the commencement oh I didn't tell you the commotion that happened around the com the commencement about two nights before the commencement uh, I had a friend call and said are you watching channel channel five news and I said no it was ten o'clock and I said no and why because you're all over the news so turn on channel five. Well, I turned on Channel 5, but it was too late by that time. And the, the commotion was that the St. Louis University students, graduates, did not want the papal nuncio to give their keynote address for their graduation, their commencement address. And they, by name, said, we want that Sister Antonia Ebo to give us our address because she is, she, she is talking yeah, from the same this. kind of way that we learned. We've been learning all these years. And, uh, and, and for one brief, silly moment, I thought to myself, I could do that. <laughs> and then I thought to myself, uh-huh. You really are cruising for a bruising from the Pope himself when, when I'm asking his Papal Nuncio, his ambassador, <laughs> get out of the way, Antonio wants to talk. <laughs> so, but at any rate, let's see, I think what I did was I made some copies. I made, uh, there was an article in the alumni, St. Louis University Alumni News, and, and, um, and I actually made 
I, I wanted to have a keepsake. I don't, I don't have that much to give to anybody these days anyway. So if you would just take one and pass them around.